Lecture 6.4, Day 2, Exponential Growth and Decay. This is in Glacier National Park, Montana. And this was also taken in Glacier National Park. The number of bighorn sheep in a population increases at a rate that is proportional to the number of sheep present, at least for a while. So does any population of living creatures. Other things that increase or decrease at a rate proportional to the amount present include radioactive material and money in an interest-bearing account. If the rate of change is proportional to the amount present, the change can be modeled by dy dt equals ky. The rate of change is proportional to the amount present. If we divide both sides by y, then we can integrate both sides because it was a separable differential equation. Giving us the natural log of the absolute value of y equals kt plus c. To get rid of the natural log, we exponentiate both sides, giving us e to the ln absolute value of y equals e to the kt plus c. Exponentiation and natural log are inverse functions, so we're left with the absolute value of y on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, when multiplying like bases, we add exponents. So added exponents can be written as multiplication. We can drop the absolute value signs and write the right side as plus or minus e to the c times e to the kt. But since e to the c is a constant, whether it's positive or negative, we let plus or minus e to the c equal a, a new constant. At t equals 0, y equals y sub 0, or the initial value of y. So plugging in our initial values, anything to the 0 power is 1, and we get y sub 0 equals a. So y equals y sub 0 e to the kt. This is the solution to our original initial value problem. Exponential change. The formula can be written as y equals y sub 0 e to the kt. If the constant k is positive, then the equation represents growth. If k is negative, then the equation represents decay. Note, this lecture will talk about exponential change formulas and where they come from. The problems in this section of the book mostly involve using those formulas. There are good examples in the book, which I will not repeat here. Continuously compounded interest. I might note that when I made this slide many years ago, I had a brand new scanner. 
If money is invested in a fixed interest account where the interest is added to the account k times per year, the amount present after t years is a of t equals a sub zero times one plus r over k to the kt. If the money is added back more frequently, you will make a little more money. The best you can do is if the interest is added continuously. Of course, the bank does not employ some clerk to continuously calculate your interest with a calculator. We could calculate the limit as k goes to infinity of a sub 0 times 1 plus r over k raised to the kt. But we won't learn how to find this limit until chapter 8. The TI-89 or TI-INSPIRE calculators can do it now if you would like to try it. Since the interest is proportional to the amount present, the equation becomes continuously compounded interest, A equals A sub 0 E to the RT. You may also use A equals P E to the RT, which is the same thing. We just use the letter P to stand for principal, which is the amount you invest. Radioactive decay. And yes, I know this is not what an atom looks like, but it was the clip art I could find. The equation for the amount of a radioactive element left after time t is y equals y sub 0 e to the negative kt. This allows the decay constant k to be positive. The half-life is the time required for half the material to decay. Half-life. One-half y sub zero equals y sub zero e to the negative kt. So here we have an equation where half the original amount is left. We could cancel y sub zero and then take the natural log of both sides to eliminate the e. We have ln 1 half equals ln e to the negative kt. But ln 1 half can be written ln 1 minus ln 2. And that equals negative kt. But the natural log of 1 is 0. Then canceling the negative signs, we get ln2 equals kt, or ln2 over k equals t. So we can find half-life by using the equation half-life equals ln2 over k. And here's one more application, Newton's Law of Cooling. Espresso left in a cup will cool to the temperature of the surrounding air. The rate of cooling is proportional to the difference in temperature between the liquid and the air. It is assumed that the air temperature is constant. If we solve the differential equation dt, dt, where the big T is temperature, equals negative k times t minus t sub s, where t sub s is the constant temperature of the surrounding air, we get Newton's law of cooling. t minus t sub s equals t sub 0 minus t sub s times e to the negative kt, where t sub s is the temperature of the surrounding medium, which is a constant. Now you don't have to memorize this formula but it is useful, especially for the homework.